Now that you learned how to set up SLF4J, I want you to be able to use SLF4J. And there's just a couple of common things you should watch out for. So when you go back to the MyCrazy logging app class into the main method, and if you're coming from, say, other logging frameworks, and want to print out a debug log statement, you might be tempted to write something like if logger is debug enabled, and only if the logger is debug enabled, print out logger debug, and then maybe Houston, we have a problem. And with SLF4J, you don't have to do that because the is debug enabled check is being done in the debug method itself. And let's check it out. So you have the logger debug statement here. And then when you go back to the logback XML file, you see the root level is being set to debug. So every debug message is printed out in the console. Let's try it out. Run the program. Boot up. And yes, we see our logging statement. And when you go back now, put in info, rerun the thing again, you won't see it anymore. Exactly, so you only see the other log statement, the info statement. Now that was the first point. And the next point has got to do with how you build these messages. And just imagine you don't have just one problem, but you have a number of problems. And let's say you have five problems. And then you'd have to do something like we have, and then plus, and then plus the number of problems, not a plus, problems. And then put it back to info, just so we can see it. Run the program. And exactly, Houston, we have five problems. But there's a nicer way with SLF4J. You can leave out the string concatenation and replace it with placeholders. So you can simply go curly brackets, open and closed, and then put the number of problems here in the end. Run it again. And you see the very same log message. And I find it to be a bit simpler to read. Some people prefer the string concatenation, but I think that is simpler. What you should watch out for is that you don't mix these two together. Sometimes there's a slight mistake people make. So they have a placeholder in here, put the number of problems there, but then they just do a plus here. And now when you run it, you'll get Houston, we have curly brackets problems five, not the wanted output. Just one last note, you cannot put any lambdas in here as the, since say a function call, so you have an expensive, argument to compute and it would be nice if you could just put a uh, lambda in, inside here and i think the slf4j guys are working on it but you can't do it at the moment all right now the last thing i want to show you is something called the mdc and i'll just have to quickly revert a couple of things here and imagine you want to in every log message you want to print out the user id or the request id whenever the user logged in on, his, on the website, for example. And for that, you can use something which is called the MDC, the Map Diagnostic Context. And imagine you wanna put something there which is called user ID. And then this is my user ID. And obviously this is the user, the user ID you'd have to set for every user, for every thread that does something in your application. And then you can see down here, you do a logger info, Houston, we have uh, five problems, but we don't specify the user ID there. Rather, you go to your logback XML file, and then you can write percentage X, then user ID, and that's the logback syntax to specify something, a field out of the MDC, and it might be different for other logging frameworks. And now run the application again. And you'll see that now suddenly you see this is my use ID in front of every log message. And that's quite a time saver if you have something like a use ID or a request ID that you want to print out every time you do a log statement, but don't want to specify manually wherever you log something like so. Good. 
You now know the very basics of how to use SLF4J properly. And in the next episode, we'll go back to the mess from the very first episode again and see how we can make all these different log frameworks and see how we can make all these different log frameworks use SLF4J, even though in the code we didn't mention SLF4J. So technically, we're going to learn more about SLF4J bridges. So let's get right after it.